What's up YouTube? This is Inventory King coming at you guys with the last part of my interview with James Largo of the Cichlid Shack. Please enjoy. say get rid of them but if you can't move them or you don't have nowhere to go with them say a local pet store uh, go to your local pet store ask them say hey I'm thinking about breeding a peacock or a hat what would what would it take for you to get them to buy and what would you like to see okay so then if somebody were to come to me I would say something as far as like a German red like I just told you uh, German reds are gonna sell umpteen number of times um, if you pick something say rare that maybe you like and but maybe a lot of people don't like you're gonna have a bunch of them around and you're gonna lose interest because you can't move them you can't uh, you'll be stuck with a bunch and you'll have a bunch of fish you like but then what do you do yeah if <laughs> so pick something that people want that you're gonna be able to sell or move or however you want to go about saying that uh, for a peacock I would say German reds lemon jakes Buy colors. I mean, uh, all sell like crazy, like hotcakes, sunshine, bangas. For haps, can't go wrong with a good Z Rock. Uh, Litho Bait, Sulfur Head, I mean, you really can't go wrong there. Um, I'm gonna say Super Red Empress, but you have to have a good line of a Super Red Empress. Uh, like mine, which is here, I'm not sure. You can see it there, but he's right next to Paul here. Uh, just an extraordinary specimen, uh, all red. Um, so if you're going to breed Super Red Empress, just make sure that it's, it's a really good line. Uh, Taiwan Reefs, can't go wrong with those. Uh, fish that's really hot right now, which we both have and we're growing out, Madoka White Lips. Absolutely. Um, can't go wrong with breeding those. Uh, Star Sapphires. Choose something that everybody wants, but it's hard to get, um, and you can't really go wrong. I think that's that's the key. Is if you want to breed fish for for the heck of it, just to enjoy the hobby, pick something that you know. Like James said, you might pick a popular fish like the German Red, or like he said, a Z Rock. And wait for one of my videos. I'm gonna in, I'm gonna tour this room. The Z Rock, amazing. Uh, back to what I was saying is you can end up with a whole room full of fish that no one's going to want to buy that you may like so what are you going to do with them and we all want to do the humane thing so pick a fish that you can sell yourself that you can use as credit with your local pet store you have friends who like fish it's important to like you said you don't want to just end up with a bunch of fish because who knows what you're going to do with it. tanks and tanks of fish no one wants and then you'll lose interest in it and you know then they just end up going to waste anyway and you know you want to keep interested in yourself interested in the hobby that's what it's all about yeah drive is every, like like every hobby everything out there you can have all this energy behind you and just go gung-ho and then eventually it'll fizzle out so it's important to make sure you go at a pace where your interest in this in especially the the african civil hobby the hobby where you're you're caring for life here you know you have living animals uh, you don't want to go too fast to where you, you just burn out all your energy in the first couple months. That's correct. Uh, so you've been a fish keeper for many years. I mean, like I said, since eight years old. How have you been so successful? Uh, a whole lot of patience. <laughs> um, even senior fish keepers like myself and, you know, John and Joey and, uh, you know, all the big YouTube names. We all lose fish. We all make mistakes. I mean, look at uh, Joey and the King of DIY with his uh, arowana. He picked a fish that just didn't go with it, uh, and you know he made the mistake, and he ended up having to find a new home for them. And now he's going another direction. Yep. We all make mistakes. So uh, patience, uh, being willing to still learn. You know, I still watch. I watch tons of YouTube videos. I watch yours. I watch you know just about everybody on YouTube. Uh, I'm still learning, trial and error, uh, you know, 
when I started this thing, I picked certain colonies that I thought you know people would be interested in. A few of them I picked because I just really liked. Uh, they happen to work out, but like I told you earlier, like my Mbenji Regal Blue, it just it's one of those fish that I breed that's really really nice, but. And I like it a lot, but that doesn't mean that, you know, others like it a lot. It's kind of like one of those standard fish that maybe somebody will add on if there's something else every once in a while, but it's just, it's not a real popular fish in the hobby. So I'm thinking about selling that breeding group to somebody else who might, you know, be gung-ho about breeding them again and uh, picking something else up new. Like, uh, I've been thinking Strigatus. Nice. Uh, because man, are those beautiful. Absolutely. And as available as they used to be, they're not readily available anymore. So um, just thought that that would be a good fish to breed. Yeah, it's, it seems like it seems like you can't be too stuck on what you pick. Like you got to be able to adapt to change because, again, you know, one fish might be real popular for a stretch of time, and then another one will take its place. And I know I've learned over the years that I don't know everything, so it was. I've learned so much. There's so much we could learn uh, from people in this hobby. Steve Collins, one of these guys, go check out his channel. He just did a 210 gallon uh, setup. Yep, switch uh, from a 125 to a 210 or 220. 210, 220. Jay Wilson's got a lot of stuff. Uh, Evan Alexander, the IFG, he's he does so much for everyone in this hobby. John Hudson, King of DIY. James here, these are just to name a few. Uh, there's a lot of people out there willing to help and make sure you check it out when you need some questions asked. Answered. What's required to be successful? Uh, patience. Uh, a lot of drive. I work really hard. Uh, when I first started, uh, I was working a 40 an hour, 40 hour a week job. Full-time student at University of Phoenix, five kids, a wife, and the fish room. I mean, I was working around the clock. Uh, so patience, uh, drive. You're not gonna get rich selling fish. Let me tell you firsthand. Um, this is an expensive hobby, even after it's up to maintain. Uh, I'll give you an example. My electric bill runs me $426 a month year-round. So just imagine that, just an electric, uh, keeping this fish room going. Uh, the food, yeah. you know, a pound a day, uh, medications, uh, chemicals like safe to do water changes. And, you know, I'm uh, going through the process of changing out to better sponge filters at this point. Uh, always adding lighting and new breeding colonies and, you know, because I can't just keep the same stuff. Everybody wants different and new and, you know, that's why I think that's why they like the Phoenix so much. It's something new and different that not everybody has. So exactly. we're trying to keep cutting edge and I think uh, my customer service, I think, is what sets me apart from the rest. I answer no every single question almost instantly, as fast as I can. Um, if something happens to a shipment, which is rare, um, I believe it even happened to him, and uh, the Postal Service lost his package. Yeah. Uh, I shipped out brand new fish for him. No questions asked. I didn't even search for the package. I just sent them out. Uh, I don't ask questions. Exactly. Um, the customer's right, and I don't care what anybody says about it. Uh, again, there's going to be people who take advantage of that. Um, I try and do the best I can to deal with those, but I'll, I'm still going to bend over backwards to make them happy as customers of the Cichlid Shack because our motto is once you go shack, you never go back. So um, we always say that, that now you're part of our fish family and that's what we believe. And something James pointed out is earlier is he spends four to six hours a day in this room between just maintenance and doing whatever it is he needs to do to keep his business running. So, uh, and he said he answers his, all of his emails to the best of his ability on Instagram, his comments. If you send a comment and it doesn't happen to get answered, try sending it again. Again, he's got his family life and he's got all the hours a day that he's spending in here. He will get back to you and the customer service sets him apart from most. So you will absolutely get your question answered. You will absolutely get the best fish and you're gonna love them. 
what's your okay, so what's your favorite part of the hobby? You breed, you know, you ship fish, you grow them out. What do you gotta say is the thing that just gets you the most? New fish day. I mean, even with all the fish I got, I still when I get shipments in or I order a new breeding colony, I'm still like a kid in a candy store, man. I, I, I'm waiting for the boxes to get here. I'm, you know, I'm waiting for the plane to land. I'm following up my computer screen. I'm no, I'm no different than any of you who are waiting for fish to come from me. I mean, that's what it's about for me. I know I'm constantly looking for a new fish that I can breed, uh, something that maybe I can bring in for you guys to, I mean, I'm just, I'm constantly looking and, and checking for new things to bring in, uh, new availability on fish. Um, I'm working on some projects, the Blue Sunset. Uh, I'm working on Xerox OBs. Uh, what else do I got? The Eclipse, the Phoenix. I mean, I, I'm constantly doing something to try and uh, broaden the horizons, I guess you would say, so that I'm not, you know, I don't just want to have German Reds and Lemon Jakes and, you know, the same stuff that everybody has. Of course, I want to have them because everybody wants them. But I want other stuff that people, you know, are looking for, like my Buconotos that I've been uh, bringing in here. I just, you know, I can't keep enough of them. People are just, they want them and they want them now. And, yeah. you know, and people ask me for different fish and I'll look for them and I'll try and find them to the best of my ability. Absolutely. And if I can't find them, I'll refer them to, to good guys out there in the hobby. You know, uh, Butch Livingston at Southeast Cichlids. Uh, Justin at Dat Cichlids is another great guy. I mean, if I don't have it and I can't get it, why not, you know, refer them to the, these other great guys? So, you know, that's part of my customer service. These guys are, you know, sure they're my competitors, but they're also, you know, they're part of the fish family. Exactly. So, I mean, I refer just as much to Gats and, and Southeast Cichlids and, and some of these other guys as I, as I do for myself. I hope you guys enjoyed this three-part series of my interview with James Largo. Unfortunately, there was about a third of the interview that the audio got messed up, so um, there was more to this interview with more great content that unfortunately is lost. Um, so, hope you guys enjoyed part one, two, and three. Uh, James is a great guy. It was nice to meet him in person. Um, when you guys are looking to add more fish to your tanks, go to the cichlidshack.com. And when you check out on at the cart, or you could email James, uh, jlargo20 at gmail.com. There's two ways you can order. Um, use that code INVENTORYKING, and you can get 10% off of your order of fish and products, and James will get you a quote on shipping. Uh, so again, uh, hope you guys enjoy. Go over to the Cichlid Shack's uh, YouTube page, subscribe. Uh, if you're on Facebook, Go to uh, James Largo Jr., I believe is what it is. Um, friend him on Facebook. Also head over to Instagram. It's the Cichlid Shack. Hit it up. Um, when you go to my home screen, you can see uh, on my channel art, I got my links to my social media also down in the description. So please comment, like, share if you'd like, subscribe, and stay tanked.